droppers on top of hoppers. It is widely known that if you want to reduce the amount of lag your ho hoppers cause in your world, it is always best to put a dropper on top. But is that really the case? In 1.12, definitely. But since then, in 1.14, we've gotten the composter, another block that interacts with hoppers that may very well surpass the dropper. To set the sage, one day I was working on my storage room project to try and reduce lag any way I can. That way there's more performance available for me to do other things within the area since my storage system is going to be built at my base. And when I was doing that, and I remembered something. The composter is a block that exists. And beyond it being just a block that exists, it is a very unique block in that it has hopper functionality, as seen here. But unlike all the other blocks that have hopper functionality, isn't a block entity, as seen here. We can push it with a piston, whereas we can't push block entities with pistons in Java Edition currently. And looking at the composter, it's a very simple block. All it has is a small amount of sate, its level, ranging from 0 to a maximum of 8. One could also perhaps use it as a form of data storage and of reading it back into, in a piston feed tape. Oh man, this would be crazy to try and decode that signal. The dropper, on the other hand, as a block entity, has an inventory within it, and inside is nine inventory slots. So this left me to theorize. A hopper, when it checks the block above it, finds out this is a composter, all it needs to do is check its level. If level max, generate bone meal, reset composter back to level zero. Whereas with a dropper, the hopper has to actively search each one of these inventory slots. So with this in mind, I created this test world to help me test this. And right here I got a whole bunch of command blocks, so I can fill in hoppers, 70,000 of them to be precise, and fill on different end of blocks on top. And I also figured while I'm at it, why not also test out all the other blocks that have functionality with hoppers and see what effect they have end of on hopper lag. Before we get to the benchmark, I want to talk a little bit about the testing methodology. All tests were conducted on a local multiplayer server running Minecraft 1.14.4 with Carpet Mod, within a Y0 Glass 4 world with 70,000 empty hoppers and no entities within the world itself. I stood in the same place each test and made sure all the chunks around me were loaded before benchmarking. The server itself was restarted between testing each block, because if I had it, I could actually get inaccurate testing results. An example of this would be one of my early tests, which showed that chests performed much better than shulker boxes on top of hoppers. This result is wrong. What happened here was that chests were the first block entity I had filled into the world using the fill command. Then once I finished testing chests, I used the fill command again to replace them with shulker boxes, at which point I continued testing without rebooting my server. It is this action of filling, removing, or replacing block entities that caused these skewed results. This performance regression only ever occurred when involving block entities, and did not happen when filling, removing, or replacing non-block entities, such as dirt, air, redstone blocks, etc. If anyone who is familiar with the game's code knows why this regression was observed, I'd like to hear from you. Anyways, this is why it's so important to set up the testing environment first, and then right before you start benchmarking, reboot the server. Now, onto the benchmarks. This chart shows the MSPT, or milliseconds per tick, of block entities with different blocks on top of hoppers. Lower is better here. Starting near the top with our baseline, hopper performance with nothing on top was 62.6 MSPT. Likewise, the use of building blocks that don't have any sort of special functionality when on top of hoppers yielded a similar result, at 62.8 MSPT which is within the margin of error of no blocks on top. I'd also like to reiterate that these tests were done in a world with no entities. If item entities were present within the same chunks of the hoppers during this test, you would expect to see worse results here. 
The double chest with its 54 inventory slots takes first place on this chart as the worst performer in this test, coming in higher than a hopper with nothing above it at 66 MSPT. Something to note here is that each double chest was covering two hoppers each. If you were to have one double chest covering one of the each 70,000 hoppers, you'd expect to see worse results here, as chests are ticking blocks and you would be doubling the number of them. Single chests and shulker boxes got 36.4 MSPT and 35.9 MSPT respectively. And with chests on top of hoppers, we end up seeing a 41.8% improvement over baseline. The real interesting thing here, however, is the barrels, which came in at 32.5 MSPT, or a 48% performance improvement over baseline. The reason for this is simple. Chests and shulkers are ticking blocks, and as such cost some amount of per server performance for just existing within the world. Barrels, on the other hand, are not ticking blocks and don't cost any performance. If you don't need the capacity of a double chest, or the portability of a shulker box, but need a 27 slot general inventory block above your hopper, then the barrel is the best for that use case. Moving on, all the furnace types here are basically the same and are all within margin of error. With blast furnaces coming in at 23.2, smokers at 23.0, and furnaces at 22.6 MSPT. The real interesting part here, however, is the dropper, which came very close to furnaces in this test at 22.3 MSPT, a 64.4% improvement over baseline, and a 31.4% performance improvement over barrels in this test. The fact that this result is so close to furnaces shocked me. It has been generally accepted in the technical Minecraft community that furnaces on top of hoppers are just flat out worse than droppers on top of hoppers in 1.12. However, here in 1.14, the results are so close to each other. Whether this is due to a performance improvement in one area, such as with furnace ticking, or a performance regression in another area, such as with hoppers searched for items within the inventory above, is unclear. Yes, in the end, droppers did add job furnaces here, but not by the amount I had expected. Perhaps I'll go back to 1.12 at some point to rerun my tests and see how they stack up versus my 1.14 results. Out of curiosity, I also decided to test the lag reducing effects of putting a hopper that is locked via redstone, in this case a redstone block above it, above another hopper. And with the result of 24.3 MSPT, I can safely say there is no real performance reason to do this. If you need a general inventory block above your hopper, use a dropper. Now, the reason I'm making this video. The composter on top of hoppers comes in at 15.5 MSPT, a massive 75.1% performance improvement over baseline. But what is even more impressive here in my opinion is the 30.2% performance improvement we see over droppers in this test. Without a shadow of a doubt, composters are the best block to put on top of your hoppers in Minecraft 1.14.4. The reason why composters are the best here is just as I theorized earlier. Composters are not block entities, they are not ticked, and they don't have an inventory that the hopper below has to check. All the hopper has to do is check its level. If level equals max, generate bone meal and reset level back to zero. They are literally one step away from dirt in terms of how dumb they are. Only that dirt doesn't have any hopper functionality. And that here is why composters take the cake as the best block to put on top of your hoppers. Oh yeah, and I also tested locking all 70,000 hoppers by putting redstone blocks on top of them, and as expected, it beats everything. Well, there you go. Now you know if you're playing Minecraft 1.14, and presumably later versions as well. Use composters on top of hoppers to reduce the most amount of lag possible. Oh, and in case I didn't make it obvious earlier, all of this crap in this world wasn't present when I had conducted these tests. I simply built it all up into f in preparation of the video. But yeah. Anyways guys, that's all I got for today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, whenever that may be, I'll see you all later. Bye.